Okay, so thank you to this um, afternoon session. Uh, so it's my pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Aaron Kapitulnik from Stanford University. And he's going to talk about time reversal symmetry breaking in multi-component or the parameter in complex superconductors. Um, thank you. Uh, like everybody else, I want to thank the organizers for the something wrong. The I, I agree. I think you need to do it on that But it, it's maybe not yours. It's maybe here. Let's say it's here. It's here. It's here. Oh. Oops. Okay. Oh, thank you. Sure. So now I need to share it. Okay. And okay. So what is this? I don't know. It's, it's it's not in this. Oh, oh 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 oh. So how um, do I there you go. reduce it? Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Uh, thank you for the invitation to come and tell you a little bit about our work on time reversal symmetry breaking of unconventional superconductors. Uh, if you read it, you read or you will read the abstract. I uh, attempted to focus today on uranium tellurium two, which is uh, a current material of, of interest, but uh, I want to walk you first uh, through the whole story, and in particular, uh, um, the the measurement and what does it what does it mean? Uh, partially because uh, there have been recent papers on other materials uh, where uh, it was ambiguous and sometimes even wrong. Um, good. So uh, this, this is a cast of characters that, that uh, uh, were involved in this work. And how do I, how do I? You have it. Yeah, it's, it's, I do, I click. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, may, may, maybe when you, no, sorry, may, maybe you walk here with it. It works in this way. Okay. No. Let, let's do something. Let's do it again. Try now. Ah, no, 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 no. Stop. Okay. Now I will do this. It doesn't. Uh... Yeah, probably. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I know what to press, but. It's not changing? No. Can I change it? Make it sometime. Yeah. Do you want to try with my presenter? I think it works. I don't know. It was working for a second. I know. What? Oh, I mean, I can do you right back. Okay. I, I'm, I'm going to start with my, no, I have, I have mine, but mine does not show on the screen for the Zoom people. Um, oh, you have. Okay, otherwise I will just use the one that. Yeah, okay. No. No. I think there's something probably wrong with this one. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. The, the Zoom people will guess uh, where the pointer is. Um, um, this one, I think, this one does work, and and this is bright. Okay, so um, 
start the clock now. <laughs> okay, so um, um, I want to I want to tell you about uh, 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 some results, as I said, on uranium tellurium two. But before I get there, I want to re review a little bit um, what we are doing here. So. Um, Let's first uh, talk about superconductivity and time reversal symmetry breaking, which is going to be the subject of the talk today. So if I write uh, the pair wave function uh, as a product of the orbital and the spin part, um, which of course will be also proportional to the gap function, which will be our order parameter, then I have two possibilities, one for spin singlet uh, and one for a spin triplet where the order parameter is a vector. Uh, and therefore the most general uh, function for the gap that includes both possibilities uh, is written here where we will focus uh, on, on, on the uh, gap functions either for a singlet or a triplet uh, case. So um, if we, I have this most general order parameter and I use the, and I use the time reversal operator operating on this uh, gap function, then it's easy to see as you operate and you can check me uh, that when time reversal symmetry is preserved, uh, then delta uh, for the uh, spin singlet case is, is simply equal to the complex conjugate and similarly for the uh, triplet case. Okay, so if I take therefore a situation in which the gap function uh, does not equal to its complex conjugate, obviously time reversal symmetry is broken uh, and I'll have therefore a real and imaginary part uh, similarly for the triplet case. Uh, and an example is uh, the celebrated P-wave superconductor, uh, the first attempt to describe superconductivity in strontium uh, to ruthenium 4 uh, where the uh, D vector uh, had a P plus IP in the, uh, in the plane uh, uh, multiplied by the, the Z component. Uh, and and uh, as you can see, this is a complex order parameter that describes Cooper pair going one way uh, or another in, in this orbital motion. Okay, now um, I wanna talk about multi-component order parameter in a more general case. Um, and for that, I decided to, to take an example, uh, which uh, bring us uh, back uh, about 40 years uh, when people uh, discovered uh, two transitions in uranium platinum three uh, and were debating uh, what is the cause for it, assuming that this is genuine and not inhomogeneities or, or uh, uh, something like that. Uh, of course, soon uh, after the specific heat came other measurements such as uh, uh, sound, sound attenuation um, and uh, three different phases were identified. Now, the, the issue is that even at zero magnetic field, one sees two different phases. And this was a puzzle because uh, in principle, uh, for that, if you start with one possibility, which is uh, one order parameter that belongs to a, a two dimensional uh, representation, then you need a symmetry breaking field uh, that, that will uh, split these, these two transitions. Uh, for those that followed Stone to this was one of the big puzzles why uh, it doesn't split, for example, in Stone to when you apply magnetic field. Okay, so here it was split. Uh, and then soon after uh, uh, an idea for a symmetry breaking uh, came along uh, and, and, and eventually uh, it turns that there was a particular uh, 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 2D representation for the order parameter in UPT3. But at that time, uh, as this was not uh, clear, people said, well, maybe there is another possibility which you have two uh, primary order parameters. Uh, and they are uh, from different irreducible representations, uh, and they could be either spin singlet or spin triplet, each one of them. Um, and then there is uh, uh, accidental degeneracy there, uh, but since for that you need fine tuning, uh, then maybe uh, there is something else that stabilizes it. So you see that in either possibility, you need something. You need something uh, that will play the role of symmetry breaking, uh, in the first scenario or something that will do the fine tuning for this second uh, scenario. Um, so I'll come to these two uh, issues. So um, I'm going to use uh, uh, light to detect time reversal symmetry breaking. Uh, so uh, this is actually quite simple. 
uh, if you take uh, a, a light, uh, a beam of light po pointing, let's say, going in the Z direction, and you apply the time reversal operator, uh, then uh, for that, the only thing that matters uh, is the part of the time reversal operator that, that uh, complex conjugate it. And therefore, uh, as you can see, the time reversal operator behaves like a mirror, right? It reflects back uh, into the minus Z direction. That's important. It's important for understanding experiments uh, that test for time reversal symmetry breaking. Well, uh, if you have a material that breaks time reversal symmetry breaking, it turns that uh, the eigenstates of uh, the electric field uh, in, uh, in such a material uh, are going to be uh, not linear polarization, which sometimes people use in order to detect time reversal symmetry breaking, but rather the two circular polarizations written here as E X plus minus I E Y. Uh, and then the, uh, uh, indices of refraction for right and left polarized light uh, will be uh, uh, maybe different uh, as uh, time reversal symmetry is working. So uh, again, this is indeed uh, an indication for time reversal symmetry breaking uh, that uh, the index of refraction for uh, right and left circularly polarized light are different, okay? Now, uh, this leads uh, then to two uh, most common uh, measurements uh, for that, which is uh, the Faraday effect, which is in, in transmission, uh, where uh, the Faraday angle that is by how much a linear polarization rotates, and remember linear polarization uh, is a superposition of the two circular polarization by how much it rotates, and it's simply proportional to the difference between these two indices of refraction. And in polar care effect, and I will emphasize uh, the polar care effect uh, a few times in this talk, uh, then uh, it's an, uh, this combination that's the imaginary part uh, of this combination of the index of refraction. So you see that still uh, there is this difference between the index of refraction for right and left circularly polarized light. Okay, so uh, the issue is uh, that uh, there is another uh, uh, property uh, of materials that will rotate polarization and will uh, uh, have a difference uh, between right and left uh, circularly polarized light. I said time reversal symmetry is broken uh, when uh, the, the index of refraction for right and left circularly polarized light are not the same. Uh, but um, this is a property of all gyrotropic material. And gyro gyrotropic materials can be either time reversal symmetry breaking or not. Uh, a solid, I mean, a, 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 a crystal of, of sugar uh, will rotate polarization because sugar molecules are chiral. Uh, quartz. Uh, is chiral, tellurium is chiral. These materials don't break time reversal symmetry. Uh, however, they will uh, rotate polarization because uh, the, the right and left circularly uh, uh, indices of refraction for uh, uh, circular polarization are different. So really the, the whole idea of using optics to search for time reversal symmetry uh, breaking uh, hinges on, on uh, uh, scrutinizing all these uh, different different uh, possibilities. Okay, so I want to talk about the polar care effect. And as you will see, uh, this is really the acid test for time reversal symmetry breaking. Every other method uh, really does not take, does not test for it uh, uh, directly. So um, when you take light and you and you scatter it from a surface of, of, of a solid, uh, then, uh, and, and let's talk about circular polarization, uh, then there are two possibilities, okay? I can, uh, let's say that, that I use uh, one direction and I, I measure the circular polarization with respect to the direction of propagation. Uh, then uh, K will be the direction of propagation and plus, let's say, will be right circularly polarized light, uh, minus is, is left circularly polarized light. So I can have an index of refraction for going in the direction of K uh, for right circularly polarized light or for left. And similarly for coming back for right or left, they don't need to be the same. In fact, all four can be, can be uh, uh, different uh, depending on, on the material. So uh, if you uh, do this uh, calculation using the transition amplitude, uh, if I do this as a scattering uh, problem, uh, then you will find that reflection coefficient for right circularly polarized light is basically the difference in indices of refraction uh, for 
for uh, right and and for for left uh, going in the opposite directions and and similarly uh, for for uh, uh, left for, for left and right uh, going in this direction if I look at le left circularly polarized line that yes yes So, so the okay. So uh, that's a very good point. Uh, sorry, basic, you, sorry, can you repeat oh, the question? Yeah, what if, happens? What happens uh, if you if you uh, uh, do this experiment uh, uh, for materials uh, that, like an antiferromagnet, that there is no net magnetization uh, in a particular direction? So uh, there are some. Uh, uh, unique uh, cases in which you will have a signal, uh, but uh, in general, if it's if you just take a, a, a pure antiferromagnet, the signal will be zero uh, unless you do it on atomic scale, like like uh, uh, measurement that that yeah, of course. But uh, uh, note one, one second. Note that I'm talking about uh, uh, if you see a signal, is it or not? If you don't see a signal. Okay, there will be lots of possibilities when you don't see a signal. If I do see a signal in a polar care effect, time reversal symmetry is broken. Excla that's it. It could be broken uh, because of antiferromagnet uh, type. It could be broken because I don't have enough sensitivity. Uh, I'll show you our sensitivity in a minute. You wanted to ask something. Because that's exactly what I'm telling you. That that uh, in a I mean, if you then uh, now calculate if I have right and left circularly polarized light, the care angle, okay. Uh, in fact, if you use scattering theory, uh, can be represented as the difference in argument between uh, going right coming back right versus going left coming back left. Uh, which can be translated into this combination of indices of refraction. You see, all four different indices of refraction appear here. In a in a, a, a optically active material, for example, then each one of these is zero. And the reason is simply because uh, for a chiral material, a, 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 a right hand screw is a right hand screw whether you look at it from here or from here, and you can take. You can take a nut, you can put it on a right hand screw from this direction or this direction, it's going to be the same. And that's why it doesn't matter on the direction, this is going to be zero for a normal optically active material or chiral material. But if time reversal symmetry is broken, uh, then if I go one way, there will be one index of refraction coming back the other way, it's not. Uh, which for those that want to use Faraday effect, uh, then the way to do it, uh, if you have a, a, a transparent material, put a mirror. We talked about a mirror for light, right? You put a mirror and now you go back and forth. You go back and forth. If time, if time reversal symmetry is uh, not broken, you come back to where you started from. If time reversal, si si reversal symmetry is broken, you get twice the Faraday angle. Okay? That's a way to do it. That's that's what I that's what I said. No. Yes. The gyro property itself is due to time reversal. Meaning both gyro. I, I, supposing I have a I have a circular spring. Yes. I have a spring with a handedness. Yes. In which current is beginning to flow. Yes. So it, it was not chiral before. Let's say I have a situation in which it's not chiral before. But there, okay. Chiral due to okay. Uh, wait. I mean, I, I have a limited time, but I can answer you uh, in, in, in show. If the chirality polarizes the spins, then you will see a care effect because time reversal symmetry from that point of view that I, I said following premise, there is going to be a, a net uh, result. If the chirality does not polarize the spin, then I will see zero. Okay, let me continue. Okay, yeah, we, we let that go. 
Now, uh, so if we, so by the way, what I showed you so far, I used time reversal symmetry breaking, but actually it's a much more general uh, concept. It's the concept of reciprocity, which means that this, this expression for the care effect is the expression uh, where whether reciprocity is preserved or not. And non-reciprocity can come out before because of uh, non-equilibrium, because of, of inhomogeneities in, uh, as a function of time, temperature, whatever. But if reciprocity uh, uh, is preserved, uh, then this is absolutely true. And if reciprocity is not preserved, uh, then uh, you get a finite, uh, a finite care effect. And as I wanted to say, this is true only for polar care effect. If you take light and you now uh, shine it at an angle and you measure the care effect, this is no longer true. And a chiral material of any type is going to give you a finite effect. Only the polar care effect gives you an absolutely uh, uh, unambiguous uh, result. Faraday, circular dichroism, et cetera, they, you can view them as going only one direction and therefore they cannot really distinguish the four different indices of refraction, okay? Okay, so uh, I wanna talk about uh, superconductors and time is running. Um, so, and I wanna use light, okay? And uh, we use near infrared light, uh, which is, which is a relatively high frequency. Uh, it's uh, at 1550 uh, nanometers, uh, it's 0.8 uh, EV. Uh, and you can uh, therefore calculate what is going to be the response, uh, uh, K response of an, uh, 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 some unconventional superconductor. I'm not gonna go through the theory of that. There are lots of papers written. It turns that you really need a multiband superconductor to, to exhibit a finite uh, uh, K effect. And uh, if you do, and you go through the estimate, then it turns that besides the fact, suppose you have an estimate of order one for the, for the uh, care effect, which for a typical ferromagnet, you get something of order uh, 10, 20 uh, uh, milliradians. That's very typical for iron, for cobalt, et cetera. Uh, then you need to multiply it by the ratio of the gap uh, over the frequency of the light square uh, to know how much you're going to measure. It's very easy to see that if you do that exercise, uh, then uh, within these theories, you get something of the order of 50 to 100 nanoradians. So uh, a back of the envelope and relatively small envelope uh, uh, estimate. Uh, uh, the question, what is motivation for care effect? Yeah, so, so uh, what he's, he's saying is, uh, he has said the polar care effect is an optical phenomenon which arises in states with broken time reversal symmetry. The question, what is motivation for care effect? Because I, I, I think I said it four times that uh, this is, uh, if I want to use optics, this is the unambiguous test for a time reversal symmetry breaking state. So that's the motivation. Um, people like Andre and Chandra and others tell me, is it or not? And then I go to the lab and and I wanna do something and the measurement that I think we should do is this measurement. So, uh, so you, you see that this is, this is really very small, uh, 50 to 100 nanoradians when normal ferromagnet gives you uh, um, 100, um, let's say 50, 20, 50, et cetera, milliradians. So I'm talking about a million times smaller than what people usually measure uh, uh, when they measure magnetic materials. Okay, so a typical measurement, and for that I am going to show you a magnetic material. Strontium ruthenium O3 is a ferromagnet below 150 Kelvin. Uh, and if you measure it, uh, uh, you take a film of, of strontium ruthenium O3 and you measure, uh, you see that's, that's PC, and it gives you a result of six uh, microradian. I told you that the ferromagnet is much higher. Well, the reason is that uh, the material breaks into domains, okay? So if I do the measurement many times and it's just, warming it up above the transition and then cooling. Each time it's a different result, sometimes positive, sometimes negative. I can then do a histogram of all these 
and find uh, that there is a histogram. And in fact, you, you know uh, from the standard deviation, uh, what is the uh, actual domain size. And when you compare it with a, a, a Lorentz uh, picture of, of the domains, uh, it really fits uh, the ratio with the, uh, like, like a Gaussian uh, uh, statistics of, of the domains versus the size of the beam. Okay, so it really works very well. But of course, once I realize that there are domains, uh, then I know that if I uh, cool now the material with a field that orient the domains, such as magnetic field, of course, uh, then I have a single domain. And here the same material, by the time I am at 90 degrees, it's already two milliradians. You see, that's 1,800. That's two milliradians. And by the time it gets to low temperature, there's going to be a few milliradians, slightly lower than iron at these wavelengths. Okay. All right. So um, again, uh, this is busy because it is uh, uh, telling you uh, if you do apply magnetic field, what are typical numbers for optical rotation? But I want you to uh, look here because this is going to be important very soon. Uh, that if you look at the normal state of, of simple metals, and from that point of view, uh, UPT3 is a simple metal, there is no magnetism hidden there, uh, then uh, a typical care effect uh, uh, should be uh, when you apply a magnetic field, of course, it is non-magnetic uh, uh, at any, at any at, at temperature, uh, then uh, uh, you can estimate it to be about 10 to the minus 10 radians uh, per Ersten. okay? So uh, suppose I'm, I want to go through a particular transition, which I will, uh, of, a super con of a superconducting state, uh, and I will apply, let's say, 50 Gauss, 100 Gauss, uh, then uh, it's going to be uh, 10 nanoradians, 50 nanoradians, okay? So uh, therefore, uh, uh, it's a very small number, okay? So I should be able uh, uh, to do this experiment without getting ambiguity, and you'll see what ambiguity one can get. Um, okay, so uh, I want to talk now about uh, the consequences of what I said so far. First of all, uh, if I want to have an apparatus that will measure uh, the care effect and will have all the properties I talked about, I want it to be an apparatus that reject all reciprocal effects. Uh, I want it to be uh, able to measure the absolute value of the, of the care effect. I don't want to, uh, uh, if I want to, to measure the weight of a captain of a ship, I don't want to measure the ship with the captain and subtract it from the ship without a captain to find the weight of the captain. Um, and, uh, and I want high sensitivity because I already estimated for you that it's 100 nanoradians what, what we are searching for. Okay, so for that, uh, we invented an apparatus uh, in my lab uh, in 2006. Uh, which is based on the Sanyak effect, except that there is no loop for those that remember what's a Sanyak effect. You have two counter propagating beams that interfere at the detector. They go through the exact same optical path. And therefore, uh, if time reversal symmetry is not broken because of something, uh, then it's a constructive interference with no effect. Uh, but if anything on the way uh, breaks time reversal symmetry, uh, then uh, you get a phase shift and it's used uh, uh, as a Sanyak effect is used, uh, for example, for fiber optic gyroscopes. Uh, here, we are not using a loop. We are using a single fiber. Uh, it's actually an optical communication fiber, which if you didn't know, uh, optical communi communication fiber is a polarization maintaining fiber. That is, it's a birefringent fiber and optical communication only uses, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the slow axis, uh, but there are two axes. And we are using now these two axes as uh, going in and coming back uh, type of axis for constructing a loop. So if I take one example, uh, if into the fiber, that's a segment of the fiber, I have uh, a linearly polarized light going uh, in, the, in one of the axes, let's say the fast axis, uh, then it goes now to a quarter wave plate, coming to the sample as circularly polarized light, let's say right, going back as left, and uh, because of that, going through the same optical, uh, uh, the same quarter wave plate, it will go 90 degrees back on the slow axis. So coming in on the fast, going back on the slow, coming in on the slow, going back on the fast, I have two counter propagating beams going in a loop of zero area. And this is really good because it's extremely stable apparatus because every point on the beam 
feels the same temperature, the, the same gradients of whatever environment you have. Uh, so it's a very stable apparatus, uh, which allow us uh, to get uh, result. The good thing uh, 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 concerning the, the uh, uh, properties that I, I discussed before uh, is that by symmetry of the apparatus, uh, it is fully reciprocal. So only if there is something which is non-reciprocal, only then we will see a signal. And uh, um, there are a few other properties. I, I want to show you uh, very briefly that uh, to you, you, you know what's an interferometer, right? It's an interferometer, but interferometer has usually two legs. In this case, it's the two counter propagating beams. Now, it becomes an interferometer where when you modulate one leg versus the other and you look at the interference uh, uh, and the change in the interference. Well, in this case, we are using uh, a, a electro-optic modulator. It's here in the circuit for those that know. Uh, and and uh, because of that, I can measure at the frequency of the modulation, at the twice the frequency, three times, et cetera, et cetera. Well, this actually uh, have uh, some, some uh, it has some uh, 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 very uh, important results. One is that, uh, well, and there is a DC uh, part. So if I wanna measure the care effect, which is uh, phi non-reciprocal, uh, is actually twice the care angle, uh, then it comes from the ratio of these uh, two components, the component of the first harmonic ver uh, over the component of the second harmonic. Uh, A's are usually zero for an isotropic material and finite for a chiral or, or a birefringent material, but uh, we know how to, to do that, uh, how to, to, to get these, these coefficients. Um, but then uh, the, the, uh, there is another issue, which is if I measure uh, now the ratio between the DC and the second harmonic, uh, I get uh, 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 this, these two coefficients, A2 and A0. A1 is, is typically zero. Uh, I get uh, these two, and these two are very sensitive to uh, uh, optical, to, to uh, all kind of optical activity and to birefringence, okay? So um, uh, a, a teaser for, for uh, Andre. Uh, these are results on cobalt dot uh, 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 ion nictide, uh, measuring it here. Uh, this is uh, this curve, that's this idea of, of that, that uh, uh, intensity that measures uh, the, the birefringence. And indeed, you see that at the pneumatic transition, uh, there is a break here. That's, and, and, and then uh, we can measure uh, the resistive transition. Uh, and that's the actual DC, but care effect only starts at lower temperatures. And, and it's very easy to distinguish uh, where it starts. Okay, so there is time reversal symmetry breaking, but it is distinct from either the pneumatic or the, or the, super, the onset of superconductivity. I'm not going to talk about that one today. Uh, another material of interest currently uh, is this Kagome, uh, we call it CVS. Uh, and, and uh, it was uh, proposed that it breaks time reversal symmetry uh, below the charge density wave uh, transition. Um, and as I told you, I can see uh, by refringence optical activity, I cannot distinguish them. Uh, and uh, that's, you see, this is the, that intensity. And the, the good thing is that it's within the same optical volume that I measure the care effect and uh, the, the birefringence of whatever other pneumatic uh, transition that occurs. Uh, so you see, indeed, there is a CDW uh, transition uh, very abrupt, just like it was found in susceptibility or in specific heat. Uh, and there is nothing in the care effect to within, uh, if you look at the average, to within plus minus 30 nano radians. Okay, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We didn't measure it yet. Yes. Okay. So, um, I mean, basically, I, I just want to show you, uh, and and you know, sometimes uh, I heard people. Uh, behind my back saying, oh, he always sees something. Well, no, 
Here is an example where we don't see anything, uh, despite the fact that there were, that there were uh, reports uh, in the literature, uh, a few reports so far, uh, on care effect uh, of order of 40 uh, micro radians. That's uh, a factor of a thousand larger than what I show you here is nothing. Okay, so I believe that there is nothing. Okay, so uh, I need to get uh, uh, soon to the subject of the talk. Uh, and before I get there, I will start with the U, uh, but U not tellurium two, U platinum three. I mentioned it before uh, because at the time it was a puzzle whether uh, what kind of multi-component order parameter it is. Um, and uh, we get amazing crystals from Bill Halperin, uh, at, at Northwestern uh, with a triple R of a thousand, uh, very, very typically extremely high quality. And you see they're very big, a few millimeters. Uh, so we can do a lot of measurements. And uh, well, here it is. Uh, that's what people proposed. I told you there was a debate. Uh, the debate come down uh, with the proposal. Uh, I think uh, the theory was, was mostly done by, by uh, Jim Souls. Uh, and that is, uh, if, if you remember uh, you, uh, 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 how to do it, then uh, the real part is, is KZ, KX squared minus KY squared. And the imaginary part is K, KZ, KX, KY, which is basically KX plus I, KY uh, squared times KZ, okay? So uh, indeed, there are uh, two components. Uh, the A phase, as people call it, uh, has just the real part. Uh, the B phase uh, adds the imaginary part and the C phase uh, has just uh, the, the imaginary part. Okay. Now, uh, just to show you uh, the, the capability of, of the apparatus, uh, uh, the red is the care effect. Uh, this is the susceptibility. You see that we are already way in the superconducting state uh, when, when the care effect uh, picks up. Uh, this is 0.55 Kelvin. This is 0.46 Kelvin where we see the, the transition uh, and we can easily uh, distinguish, uh, distinguish them, okay? By the way, it's much easier to measure uh, at these temperatures than at one and a half Kelvin uh, because uh, the dilution refrigerator uh, or the helium-3 systems, they are all very stable at lower temperatures and much less stable around uh, above one Kelvin. Okay, um, so I told you that that uh, you want to do it. You want to do it many times, uh, uh, and then see that the the effect is is changing sign. Well, it is. This was done. Uh, these are many uh, zero field cooldowns that were done in a low temperature uh, 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 mu metal shield, uh, and so sometimes plus, sometimes minus. Uh, and all of them of the same size, which means that it's really within the, the size of the beam, which was about 10 microns. Uh, uh, this is a single domain, okay? Uh, and then uh, we talked about training with the field. Suppose it was not a single domain. How do we know? We cool it in magnetic field. Uh, and and uh, here we cool it at, at plus or minus 50 Gauss. Uh, and we see that first, we see that indeed it's, it's uh, determining the sign of the effect. Uh, I call it at plus 50 Gauss, I get, I get uh, that. Uh, this is just one of the zero field results to show you that it's the same size. You call it in minus 50 Gauss, uh, it, it flips sign, it, it flip uh, direction. It's the same size, uh, which uh, uh, together with the normal state understanding uh, that a care effect in the normal state is only of order of 10 to the minus 10 uh, um, radians uh, 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 per Gauss means that at 50 Gauss, uh, I will just have a, maybe a couple of nano radians. Uh, and, and therefore, if even if they are trapped vortices, I will not see them, right? Because unless I have magnetism, which will be, which we'll see soon uh, within the vortex core, uh, then, then I, I will not see it because uh, in a way it's like the normal state times H over HC2. And this is very small field. So yes, you wanted to ask something? Andre? No, sorry. Okay, so this was 
this was uh, UPT3, and, and we understand it very well. We, we did lots of measurements on this, on this material, um, but now uranium tellurium too. And this is very different now, okay? Uh, so uh, this is actually uh, results uh, written in these, in these two papers. Um, so um, at the beginning, uranium tellurium two uh, was proposed to be an end compound uh, of this series of ferromagnetic uh, superconductors, uh, end compound in the sense that uh, these are ferromagnets with higher and higher uh, Curie temperature where uranium tellurium two, uh, people could not find a, an ordering temperature down to the lowest temperature that they measured. So the idea was, well, maybe it's a quantum critical point uh, of, of, uh, of a ferromagnet. Uh, and, and it was un understood at the time uh, that uh, maybe uh, pairing as well is associated with uh, ferromagnetic uh, fluctuations. And uh, indeed, uh, the, the, here is magnetization measurements uh, that, that show that, uh, at, at least down to this temperature, show uh, that there is no uh, finite moment. Uh, and uh, these are uh, magnetic susceptibility uh, measurements that showed uh, that the A-axis is the easy axis and, and uh, there is a Kiri uh, um, law, kind of, actually. Uh, there are some issues. Uh, and then uh, a, a possible uh, ferromagnetic quantum critical point was, was uh, suggested by doing some scaling uh, with a particular uh, exponent. Um, but then uh, more recently, and this is all uh, I'm talking about, uh, 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 there, there is uh, in time, there is BC, uh, DC and AC. So BC is before COVID. AC is after COVID and DC is during COVID. So uh, these, are, these are all measurements DC. <laughs> and and uh, uh, where, where, uh, uh, first there were measurements, uh, 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 Peng Cheng uh, Dai's group uh, actually finding anti-ferromagnetic fluctuations are more relevant, uh, uh, putting doubt to the, to the uh, idea of ferromagnetic fluctuations. Uh, then, then uh, uh, there were uh, more recent uh, measurements from the from the group uh, of Fluquet that that uh, uh, there are other fluctuations uh, which which again are, are uh, uh, non ferromagnetic and in fact the ferromagnetic fluctuations are weak. Um, so all these put doubt into the idea of ferromagnetic fluctuations responsible uh, for that superconductivity. At the same time. Uh, um, STA measurements uh, in the group of uh, 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 Vidya Madhavan in, at, at Illinois find uh, that there is some signature of, of chiral uh, in gap states. Uh, the, the spin susceptibility was found not changing uh, or, or very, very little changing through the, uh, through the superconducting transition, which by the way is of order of one and a half um, Kelvin. Um, but uh, the thing that that uh, started people started to think, oh, ferromagnetism, um, superconductivity, complex order parameter. Um, what should be then uh, the the order parameter? But it's a, the material is autorhombic, so you cannot have two-dimensional representation. Uh, so you need to rely on two component order order parameter uh, that will that will be huh, this disappeared. Uh, Okay, so um, in the superconducting state, uh, there were uh, measurements uh, finding a, a nice uh, mean field look specific heat, but a lot of excitations at low temperatures. Uh, the resistive transition uh, was normal. Spin susceptibility, I just showed you. Um, so, um, oh, here it is. <laughs> okay, uh, again, not changing through, through TC. Um, Peculiarities started to appear uh, when people compared uh, the, the three different critical fields. Uh, only recently people measured, as you can see by the date, the uh, lower critical field uh, and uh, the upper critical field was known. Uh, and there was a mystery that the upper critical field uh, times the lower critical field, which uh, in fact should be roughly uh, uh, the, the thermodynamic critical field square, did not match at all, okay? Real, real uh, puzzle there. 
And then uh, uh, in the group of, of uh, uh, Jean-Pierre Paglion, uh, they started to grow samples that have two transitions, as I show here. So two transitions, uh, magnetism around, maybe time of asymmetry is broken, uh, samples were shipped to us, DC, that is, uh, and we started to measure them. Now, I should add that uh, concurrently, it was also found uh, that uh, if you apply pressure, not that high pressure, uh, there are, uh, even in samples that don't show two transitions, uh, the, the about 0.3 gigapascal uh, transition split, okay? So uh, there is a reason there, and maybe there is a multi-component order parameter and pressure is doing something uh, to it. So that's now specific heat as a function of, of uh, magnetic field uh, in the, uh, with the field in the three different direction. And you can see the two transitions, okay? So uh, that, that uh, actually led to our collaboration. So the idea is to, to do the Kerr effect. Now, um, I, I, okay, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, zoom now, but I, I, I just wanna say something um, about, again, about measurement of superconductors. So you see, um, when you have a superconductor and you apply and you apply magnetic field, okay, then there is very uh, strong uh, susceptibility. You have diamagnetic susceptibility. It's a very strong susceptibility, but it's an edge effect, which means that if I come with a care effect to the center of the sample, I will not see these currents. I will not see the Meissner effect, okay? That's an advantage. It's really an advantage if you want to study, for example, the vortex state, uh, if you want to study really the, the, the symmetry of the other parameter without being affected uh, by these, these currents. So for that, you really need to, to go to the center of the, of the sample, which we did. And these are now uh, many uh, zero field cool. Uh, it's a mess, but I think it's very clear to see that it, it, and you see the signal, the, the, the size, okay? That's 100 nano radians, that's 200 nano radians. So the envelope is roughly at 400 plus minus 400 nano radians. So that's already an indication that at low temperature, something is really happening as, as compared to above, above TC. But unlike uh, UPT3, which uh, in all our measurements, and by the way, also in neutron measurements, it's a, the domains are enormous, uh, here, it could be that there are uh, very small domains. In fact, a, a recent USR paper that just appeared uh, a few weeks ago uh, suggests uh, also uh, very, very small domains. So um, then we started to do measurements at very low field uh, and uh, not at field, uh, cooling in a field, turning the field to zero and measuring. And you see that 20, 30, 20, 25, 30, uh, they all fall on top of each other, which suggests that and and and, the, and now it's a cleaner uh, 0.4 uh, microradian. So this could be really the intrinsic time reversal symmetry breaking. I'm going to skip the theory part uh, uh, of that. Uh, that's the analysis uh, that that uh, Daniel Atterberg did that ended up with this idea uh, of of uh, uh, this these two components, uh, which as you can see are from different. Uh, 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 with different other parameters, but then you increase the magnetic field that you, you cool. Now, do you know, you, you probably remember if, if you did some vortex physics, if you take a hard superconductor and you cool it in magnetic field, uh, then vortices start to go in. If it's a hard superconductor, you are in the critical state. In the critical state, okay, then you have a finite critical current and the magnetization then uh, penetrates in until you get to the point where the magnetization penetrates the vortices, if you want, penetrated to the center of the sample, okay? That's the first time that when you have vortices at the center of the sample, <clears throat> it's, it's, uh, uh, it's called the full penetration uh, field, okay? And, and, and so what we did is we cooled in, in, in magnetic field, but this time we do see a huge change depending on the magnetic field that we cool it, which really says that we see vortices. But this is no surprise because uh, in the normal state, there is enormous effect. It's a Curie, uh, it's a paramagnet, a strong paramagnet, I'm, I'm finishing. Okay, so uh, it turns that, that at high field, high cooling field, 
it's, it's indeed uh, uh, IC vortices. At low field, it saturates uh, to about 0.4, which we uh, claim is, is the, is the uh, intrinsic order parameter time of asymmetry breaking effect. Um, there is a difference between the uh, UPT3 or uranium ruthenium to silicon 2 and this material uh, that, that they show in magnetization. Uh, but when you look at the care effect uh, of UPT3, it doesn't show anything. Um, so uh, that's the UPT3, but uh, in, in uh, um, uh, uranium tellurium 2, we do see the critical state uh, in care effect where we don't see it. Uh, as you can see here, we don't see the critical state in UPT3 as expected. Uh, and if you calculate the critical current from that critical state, that is when you see the first vortex coming with the care effect to the center, uh, that is the field, and you get and you get uh, a critical current which is very similar to what is found experimentally using using magnetization loops. Okay, so it really works. That's that's the measurement. Uh, Paulson et al. Uh, and we are very close to uh, what they have. Okay, so um, I'm going to skip the the uh, infield uh, measurement uh, because I'm I run out of time. Uh, but I want to say that if you measure susceptibility uh, in magnetic field at some field, 240 Gauss as, as an example, and then you measure the care effect at the same field, uh, then uh, there is saturation here. There is, there is actually a turning down uh, of the care effect uh, as, if, as if something fights the vortices that are already in because of the, because of the magnetic field. Uh, and I want to suggest, and that's uh, a calculation that, that I did, but, but I don't have time to talk about it, uh, that uh, the uh, contribution to the free energy that you need to put due to the magnetization uh, must include a, 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 a sp spatial varying uh, magnetization and local magnetic field rather than global magnetic field, just like you do in the vortex state of any uh, superconductor. Uh, and when you do that, actually, you do get uh, that that uh, there is strong screening uh, of the magnetization of the uh, uranium tellurium two uh, that fights against the Curie. Okay, so I'm. Um, uh, and that's the, I'm gonna, that's, uh, I'm gonna stop here. Thank you. So thank you, thanks for the talk. Uh, there has been already a few questions, but I, I see people raising hands. I apologize for not being more rigorous on the, Magnetic field dependence, but it, it, it's quite fascinating what you can do when you you really sit at the center and you wait for vortices to come in. Yeah. So, question about uh, uranium thorium two. Uh, it's a story, as far as I understand, again the story about two order parameters belong to different representations, and that yeah. below the lower temperature, you yeah. start getting them with I factor. Yeah. Probably you said it, but it was very quickly. Is there any way? Yes. to check this by adding pressure or something and splitting the two temperatures or making the two temperature flow there something that will show that there are really two temperatures so with the pressure with the pressure idea uh, i will also assume uh, that a, a uniaxial uh, effect with uh, hydrostatic pressure will be a little bit more more uh, mm -hmm. difficult uh, because i want a uh, nice surface access with the beam uh, maybe with with diamond one can do it and go through, uh, but uniaxial a la uh, Andy, uh, mm -hmm. you can you can do these kind of experiments and we have a plan for the stones and ruthenate. Uh, maybe we'll also put a uranium tellurium two there, but I, I think that 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 uh, uh, this this should do. I mean, right. Can I ask a question? Being a chair, you get a lot of exercise. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
you measured it with the with the beam along C direction. Right. UD. Yes. Now the highest critical field is along A. Right. So uh would measurement along A and B give different results and what could be we don't have a good Second. sample with good surface along these other directions. We asked from uh from JP and so far we don't have it. Can it be polished? Um, I don't know. By the way, attempts that we had in the past to polish other crystals uh, failed to get uh, because good. of strain. I, well, I don't know if it's just strain. I think that that uh, um, um, polishing uh, also uh, reduced reflectivity for us, and and uh, uh, it means I need more power, more power, more local heating, and things like that. Um, we, we never succeeded with polishing. Other questions here, or we go to the uh, questions? Uh, yeah. So first, I Leonid has was raising the hand. Uh, so Leonid, can, can you talk? Yeah. Uh, you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, you uh, can. Yeah. Hi, Aaron. Hi. Very, very nice talk. Uh, had a quick question. If your system, I mean, you talked about it briefly, what happens if you have disorder at the mains, etc. But uh, what if the mains are correlated? What if it's something like what Ellie, Ellie Zelda is, is measuring? And maybe he also talked about it earlier today. I was asleep yeah. at the time. But if it's a checkerboard, checkerboard pattern of magnetization uh, correlated okay. throughout, do, do you expect yeah. the signal? It, it to, all depends to, to, if, to be to be greater or or, or smaller. No, I'll, um, I'll, I, okay. So I I think I think that that uh, uh, it depends on the on the uh, size of of these ordered domains uh, versus the size uh, of the beam uh, because it's it's basically uh, uh, an effect that we'll have to do. <clears> with conference of the beam, right? Because inside uh, they cancel exactly. Uh, and all I have, I, I mean, in a random fashion, it's just square root of the of the two areas, the area of the beam versus the area of the domain. But uh, if it's ordered, I think that it will have to do with how mm -hmm. I, uh, so uh, it's it's gonna be more of a, of a circumference than a, a, a full area, I think. But I, I think that, 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 uh, for proper relative dimensions that we should be able to see an effect. And the same for density waves, for spin density waves? Uh, that I don't know. I think for simple spin density wave, I don't think we will see anything. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for a lovely talk, uh, Aaron. I only wish I was downstairs with you all guys. Um, uh, my yeah, question... and, and infect everybody, right? <laughs> my question is: um, uh, your in in your early in the early measurements, there was a split transition in the specific heat, but you alluded to the fact that with uh, subsequent uh, crystals, the you need to apply a finite pressure to see the specific heat split apart. Does that doesn't that kind of contradict the idea of two accidentally degenerate representations coming together? That that is, uh, I mean, I could go to that. So okay, so right now there are still two types of crystals. There are those that that have two transitions, and there are those that that have a single transition. Those with a single transition typically will have a higher TC. Uh, of order of, of two Kelvin, 1.8 to two Kelvin. Those with the two transitions, uh, which are uh, made uh, regularly, uh, they have two transitions. By the way, the, the split uh, of the two transitions in the, in the Maryland uh, uh, crystals uh, is, is very small, uh, but they can resolve it. Uh, we cannot resolve it with, with care effect, so I cannot say anything about it. We just got uh, um, a couple of months ago uh, crystals of a single transition, uh, the higher transition, a single specific heat transition uh, uh, to measure, but we did not measure them yet. 
So I don't think the story is, is, uh, is ending. Uh, we need to measure those and see whether um, uh, we see an effect or not. I should say that uh, Jeff Sonier uh, measured uh, USR for both types of crystals and didn't see any difference. Both appear to show some inhomogeneous magnetism uh, uh, in them in a very similar fashion. Mm -hmm. But we did not measure yet the single, the single transition one. Thanks very much, great. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I'm going to read, there are also some questions here in the chat. Uh, I think that one of them, maybe you have already answered that because uh, in, when you were answering Leonid, so there is one question which is uh, whether you can measure uh, polar current effect in ferromagnetic metals and uh, of, of whether you, you will yeah. see in that case. Uh, so there is another, um, uh, several other questions. One is how much strong electric field is required in case of current effect? So how strong has to be the electric field? I'm, I, I don't understand. I, I, I mean, it, the electric field is the light. Okay, that's the, that's, uh, um, if 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 the person wants to know the 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 intensity, uh, we measure uh, at at around uh, fifty microwatt uh, on a beam of ten uh, ten micrometer at very low temperatures and smaller beams at higher temperatures. Uh, the this is way below any heating or anything that one should be worried about. Another question. Um... Uh, thank you for your nice presentation. What the signification of the presence of two peaks in the heat, in the specific heat? Thank you. Maybe the first corresponds to the re reorientation disorder, and the second correspond to the nil temperature transition. Whether you can. No, I think I just answered when I um, uh, answered peels. I mean, there are two types of crystals. There are those that at ambient pressure show two transitions, and there are those that don't. Uh, and and uh, uh, I think that that we need to measure uh, those that don't in order to see whether whether time was, whether there is a care effect there or not. Which we didn't do it yet. We just got crystals. Uh, so this another one is why is the critical temperature as lower compared to. Um, Resistivity and inductive results for the uh, cobalt arsenide data. And uh, why? Yeah, is that I think that somehow probably there is uh, there is some resistivity data going showing right. the, the, right. the I don't know if you were showing that. Yeah. And that the PC is supposed to be lower to the one, I don't know, the, the one that it's you not, were showing. It's not a matter of supposed to be. I mean, yeah. this is a result. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think that I, I think that uh, uh, I, I showed it as a teaser to to Andre. I don't think that this is uh, expected. Okay, so um, so okay, so this is these are all the uh, okay. questions, and so now thanks again. Okay. And so we move now to uh, Leonie. Uh, 